So, give me one second. Sorry, I just need to do a proper official introduction here, guys. So, for everybody that has joined and is saying hello, this is the ESL Champions Club Cup number 41. It's just a social cup, having some fun with it. 38 teams battling it out. Single elimination for bragging rights. And uh, you're joined here with Quickshot and Norseman. Say hi, Norseman. Hey, guys. Well, when I say hi, Norseman, you meant to say hi, Norseman. Hi, so, Norseman. Much better, much better. The next game is going to be Destiny Gaming, facing off against A25 to life, yo. Don't forget, every time we say that, you have to say it with the accent. All right, Norsey. I won't agree to this, but <laughs> I'm going to forget. <laughs> so, having a look at the um, band so far, Jana Morgana Band and Cogmore Uri Band. So, not out of the ordinary. Vane is the next band. So, well, what we are seeing is slightly unorthodox bands. Uh, Jana, obviously, team's not wanting to deal with her, not wanting to deal with the knock-up. Not wanting to deal with um, Monsoon and those Howling Gales. And a bit strange seeing a Vane ban. You know, maybe they <coughs> don't want that hyper carry getting into the match. Another Cogmore ban this, this game. Uh, maybe there's a trend that we haven't uh, picked up on yet, Quickie, because uh, it's not a very common ban. But um, as you said, maybe they're just trying to lock out the uh, hyper carries. Yep, and it's true. Electric Hamster coming in. Mathdet is, of course, my favorite champion. I can't access the link. Uh, for the guys that are spamming some links for YouTube videos and songs to dance to, uh, I, my laptop is on the left of me. It's connected to a separate system, so I'm not actually going to be able to open up any YouTube links. So uh, Matta or, or Mankey or someone that's on the stream, give me that Meth Mephus link. I'll throw up a bit of uh, some love and dance to that. Nocturne Soraka, the next uh, lock-ins for A25 to life. Oh, not locked in, sorry. It's Mundo Soraka. You know Dr. Mundo Norse. You've played him a couple of times, haven't you? Um, Mundo is quite fun. Um, I do like him. He's got a ridiculous clear speed. He, he does tail off a bit as a jungler, though, if, if he doesn't get the early ganks, I find. Um, you sort of do need those few extra kills just to boost you in the early game to carry you forward to the late game because he feels a bit lacking in the late game otherwise. Um, I've seen Alexic's Mundo is uh, something scary to watch actually from Moscow 5. <laughs> All right, take a look through the rest of the champs there, Norse. I'm just going to spam some love on IRC. I've got 10 million million uh, yeah. messages, so We've let's make some mention of them. A Soraka Corky um, bot lane. Corky, I, I think Corky's a really strong and underrated carry, actually. He's really, really strong. That The true damage coming out is, is very good. The sight from his Phosphorus Bomb, the armor shredding from Gatling Cannon, and then the Soraka in lane with him to feed him mana. So once he hits six, he can just shoot those rockets off continuously. Uh, versus a Tristana on the other team. Now, Tristana will eventually outrange him. And um, the knockback should help as well. Cassiopeia in the mid. Um, it's another Cassiopeia that we're seeing. Very, very strong pick. The, the ulti being able to stun five people. Um, it's very, very powerful for a bunch up uh, for when the enemy team is bunched up. Uh, Sona Tristana on the um, blue team. Should be quite an interesting lane. Uh, there's quite a lot of possibility for Harass there. I've seen quite a lot of aggressive Sona supports. And then a Warwick solo top. Um, so let's see who the purple team picks to uh, counter that Warwick. Yeah, that is true. Remember, Warwick is, is pretty susceptible to Riven. We've seen Riven in the previous game. Um, Riven can kick the crap out of a Warwick during the laning phase. And... Unless he takes a lot of harass early, he's not going to die to an infinite duress either. What is going to be interesting though, Ken and Cassiopeia, uh, I think Cass can win that lane. It's going to come down to how Mafted plays Ken. You know, if he lands some, some shurikens, if he lands some damage onto Cassiopeia um, before Cass commits with a petrifying gaze, then, then I don't know. I, th I, I don't know. I, th I think it's going to come down to play a skill. Um, I, think, I think they have an equal propensity for harass. Wukong top. Um, quite, I don't know if that's a strong choice. Um, 
It's an interesting choice. Wukong does have a lot of disruption uh, with his ultimate being able to knock up and his decoys for escape. I think top lane is going to be my favorite this game because that, that'll be quite an interesting matchup. Yeah, it's also true. Um, I, you don't see too many of the uh, Monkey Kings either. I really like Wukong. Nimbus Strike into his Crushing Blow. And the sound effects are awesome. So, guys, I, I do apologize. I'm going to be uh, throwing out a few what else? Because Wukong is totally epic and totally awesome. I'm getting a couple of links here at the minute uh, with regards to just Reddit. I've got a Reddit post created at the moment, guys. Just scroll up on the chat. You can uh, bump it and just give it a bit of an upvote. It'll just help get a little bit of uh, coverage, a little a few extra viewers. So let's have a look at once the champions are locked in. So we have it confirmed. Warwick versus Wukong in the top. Kennen versus Cassiopeia in the mid. Tristana Sona versus Soraka Corky. So we've got double heal this time around because there's no Janna. So before we go too far, let's quickly bring up the uh, game screen. This is the two teams that we're facing off. It is the uh, Dutch side of Team Destiny Gaming, shortened to Destiny Gaming, facing off against the Germans of A25 to life, yo. Uh, take a look at the quick ladder. It's given an update. So we are into round two. Quite a few teams managing to get a couple of buys, obviously because of the fact that uh, we've only got 38 out of 64. So let's see, where does Destiny Gaming fit into this one? Uh, PWDT, we've seen them a couple of times actually. Um, hopefully they can win their round two. And maybe we can get into one of their round games um, shortly. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, we go. Destiny Gaming versus A25. This is the match that we're going to play. And I have some fun with it. So I promised people a little bit of dancing. We have a minute and a half to kill. So I'm going to regret this. I know I'm going to regret this. So let's get the camera up. Let's get some techno in the background. Unfortunately, I haven't got the link on uh, in-game, so I can't put any YouTube links, but uh, let, let, let's have some fun here. <laughs> oh, I can't take myself more seriously than that, guys, so... You can see what is the color of red. I am quite embarrassed. Norsi, please tell me you didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> I am watching it and I am loving it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chat is having a good laugh. I only did it for you guys and it's not going to happen again. So. Oh, I'm even recording it. This is embarrassing. This is going to be on the YouTube video. This is going to be on the YouTube video. Oh, you know what we can do? You know what we can do? Hold on. Let, let's get a camera one up. We'll do a, a, a Mr. Bean stairs. He says he won't do it again, but secretly he will because he, he gets kicked off. All right, guys. That's enough silliness for now. Let's get back to the uh, competition. For anybody that doesn't know, all of the random dancing, all of the silliness, this is round number two of the Champions Club. What you buy ESL? So the 41st time that this cup has happened. Purely for bragging rights. Who is going to call themselves the champion? Who is going to be the uh, winner of this cup? We're in round two at the minute. And we're going to be following Team Destiny Gaming against uh, A25 to life. Let's kill the music. I think you should be banned from saying A25 to life. It's A25 for life. We've got to figure out if they're uh, west side or east side. Yeah, I know it was a staircase there a second ago, but I'm really, really skilled. I'm really good at balancing, so having some fun with this at the minute. Let's have a look. Is the game loading? Actually, I think I agree with Elbow. You, you should do the Macarena. Oh, I don't even remember how the Macarena goes. I remember the song, you know, Air Ma Air What? Yeah, one or two, one or three, Macarena, hey, Macarena, hey. But I don't really remember it all that well. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not doing Barbie Girl. We're not doing Barbie Girl. So we are in round number two at the moment. I'm waiting for the champion screen here to load. We should have at least four or five more rounds worth of games. Um, for anybody that is sitting in chat or having some fun, spread the love. 
let some guys know that there's a few random South Africans on stream and we're having some fun here today. All right, I've got a bunch of messages at the moment. Uh, Mr. Popularity. Only open a new tab or Ajax will delete this. No, it's just, it's tons of tons of uh, teams and people messaging. So I'm waiting for learning. Oh, look at the Corky skin. This is the, uh, oh, what's the name? It's Hot Rod Corky, isn't it? Is it Hot Rod Corky? I'm not 100% sure on the name of that skin, actually. Could. I think it's pretty cool. If, if I remember correctly, this time around, he, uh, he, he's got like the uh, revving engines. For Deathmaker, Juist. That's Juist van der Westeisen. That's how we would pronounce it, at least in Afrikaans. Who is Juist? Uh, I'm not sure. He, Deathmaker's asking how we'd pronounce J O O S T. So that's how we would say Juist. So let's have a look. Sorry for just killing some time here, guys. Uh, in the blue trunks, it will be Team Destiny Gaming. In the purple trunks, it is A25 for life. So I'm going to have to see who's going to come out victorious Destiny or the Gangsters. I think we have some really interesting lane matchups here, um, actually. Because the, the Kennen versus uh, Cassiopeia, they both have the same propensity for um, harass. And then the Wukong versus the Warwick up top. Because Wu, uh, Wukong is actually quite a strong top lane player. Um, I just wonder if he'll be able to keep up with that Warwick sustain on his uh, Q. It's going to come down to aggression. That's, what, that's what's going to happen because... Warwick's going to be able to heal back any damage that um, Wukong lands onto him. But if Wukong plays very aggressively and, you know, pushes for kills early, he's going to be able to shut them out quite uh, effectively. And yeah, you're right. From uh, High Kiss, High, high Kiss, um, we didn't even make comments of the skins this time around. The only skin in the game is Hot Rod Corky. And everybody knows it's the skin war. Whoever wins it. Whoever has the most skins wins the game. Uh, please don't take that seriously. It's not, a, it's not a joke. Also, you can't count Tristana. It's the Facebook one. Everybody has it. So, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm not going to allow that one to slide this time around. Is, um, is this the Mankey who's been uh, talking to us in chat? Could yes, be? it is. This is, this is Mankey featuring on stream. Um, I might uh, have to play a little bit cheerleader for him because uh, he's made me laugh in the first, last few days watching you. Nice early ward drop there um, at the entrance to their jungle by um, DG. Uh, just making, just watching for that invade from the um, enemy team of A25 for life. Yeah, Mankey, we're going to have to see if we can evolve into Primate this time around. Basic level Pokemon. And if he can evolve into Primate, maybe, maybe, maybe be able to out DPS Corky. I think Tristana scales a little bit better into the late game than a Corky does, um, depending on items. Um, but it's, we're going to have to see how it plays out, because Corky's going to be able to harass and put more damage down from afar with um, those Phosphorus Bombs and the Gatling Cannons. So she's going to be able to play a little bit more safety, or Corky's going to be able to play a little bit more safety while still putting out the DPS. Tristana outranges Corky, though, doesn't she, after a few levels? Uh, after about level 7. Yeah. I can... uh, Tristana. After about level 7A, Tristana will actually outrange. It looks like Tristana and uh, Sona starting on the double golem on their side. Just uh, trying to get a, a small. Um, yeah, just get that early advantage. advantage. It just uh, means they get to level. They get to level two by the end of the first creep wave, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one thing I do want to point out: take a look at the uh, boots pots meta. Four players of A25 going for boots pots and. Three, no, two players of uh, Team Destiny. Top lane Warwick is taking cloth armor against Wukong. I'm really happy to see that because it means he's buying items for uh, his lane matchup. And take a look at this in a minute. We've already got Dr. Mundo coming up top lane of those infected cleavers. Going to be throwing some of those uh, big-ass cleavers into your face. Slowing you down. Hopefully picking up a kill. Nocturne just showing his face in the middle, being like, Hey, what's up? I'm here. Dog. It's, it's A25 for life, dude. We gotta, we gotta be a bit gangster on this, Norse. I don't know that Mundo's stuck around. He's been there for a, a good minute there now. And I don't know if that's maybe taking too long. Yeah, just completely wasting um, time. 
Looking on the bottom lane, look how much damage Soraka has already taken from this Corky there. Phosphorus bomb to the face. Followed up on those Tristana. little uh, missiles. Tristana, yeah, sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Uh, you said Soraka. Oh, my I bad. So yeah, you my... should be forced to do another Egyptian dance. My bad. For, no, uh, no, no. There'll, there'll be no more Egyptian dancing. There'll be no hey, more hey, Egyptian guys, dancing. Guys, what, what do you think about that? Every time he makes a mistake, we force him to do a, a dance on camera for us. Uh, don't don't encourage them. Don't encourage them. <laughs> uh, Mundo lost a huge amount of time in that top lane. He was camping that bush. He stole a little bit of experience. But look at the clear time. Because of that uh, burning agony, his W... He can just clear those camps so quickly, and he's still on 14 CS to the 15 of Nocturne. So, even though he was camping up there for a while, he didn't lose too much. I'm going to have to see now, how does Mankey farm on this bottom lane? It's really, really difficult at low level with no items. Looks like Wukong's been forced to go back already. Um, coming back... I don't know if he was forced to or if he's opted to go back for the sake of picking up um, the, the cloth armor and a few extra pots. Interesting to go cloth armor against a uh, Warwick. Yeah, Warwick's auto attacks will be dealing some damage, but you know most of his damage, most of his burst, those hungering strikes and infinite race, that's, that's magic damage. So I'm going to see now Warwick doing really well to farm under this tower, uh, picking up most of those first few, grabbing these uh, large collections of... Only missing about three there out of the entire wave. 20 CS to the 17 of Wukong. We've got some aggression on this bottom lane. And it looks like a very early blue bar to Cassia Pia. So they want that uh, Triple X Kevin to really put damage down again. Mr. Perfect Double Z. So it's Triple X versus Double Z. And who is bigger? The pawn person or the sleepy person? Having some fun with the nicknames. Nocturne uh, going quite aggressive into Mundo's jungle. Double buff Nocturne Look, as well. Looks like Nocturne's coming around. He may find that Mundo. Uh, he's got to get through the uh, decoy <laughs> of Wukong. So there's Wukong moving forward. Takes a Duskbringer to the face. The Paranoia is on him. But the Paranoia only hitting the uh, decoy. The small Damn. clone of the Monkey Man. Nocturne's Duskbringer letting him know super early on there that he uh, had the clone because even though you can't see the Wukong, he'll still be leaving the trail behind. Yep, that is true as well. And then just a little bit unlucky not to land that uh, Fear proc. I forget what it's actually called. Unspeakable Horror. That's the name of the spell. Seen quite a lot of aggression on Tristana in the bot lane as well. Um... And it's not too bad at the moment, because it is a double sustain with both of their support having heals, but Sona looks like she's starting to run low on mana, which um, could cause problems in the near future. Yep, it is true. So let's have a look now on this bottom lane. With all the aggression and the poke back and forth, just on 42 CS to the 41 of Corky. Once again, really, really seeing completely even farms. And there's nothing in it. I mean, you can't separate the two champions. Warwick already competing his tier 2 boots. So he's gone for the ninja tabai. And I think that makes perfect, perfect sense. Because it'll help him against Wukong. Keep him alive for a little bit longer. But he's starting to fall behind in CS. 30 to 39. And let's have a look at this. He does have a huge wave coming up though. So that'll balance it out. That'll bring it back and even. In the mid lane, 49 CS for Cassie appear to the 41 of Kennen. And Kennen has no pots. Cassiopeia still has three health potions. So that really tells you that early blue buff, that four minute blue buff onto Cassiopeia making all the difference in that mid lane. Some damage going down now from uh, Warwick. and I mean, he's, he's in charge of this lane. I, I would have thought, you know, if, if you were playing Wukong, if I were playing and I were in, in Korlik's shoes, I would have played a lot more aggressively, trying to put some damage down and really trying to do the best that we could. Um, Very good ward coverage for his lane as well. Just making sure he doesn't get caught out in his aggression. And look at the placement as well. It's very, very near the uh, Baron buff area. Or very, very near Baron pit, rather. And that's purely because of the fact that Nocturne's paranoia is going to allow him to jump a huge distance. And having that early ward is going to be enough to give him advantage, let him know what's coming. And uh, a stolen blue buff. Dr. Mando picks up the blue buff from the uh, blue team. 
of Destiny Gaming. Warwick's going to be coming up now as well. Warwick, I think Warwick was thinking about pushing onto that uh, Wukong. He didn't have a ward or anything though, so I don't know if he knew Rotten Mundo was in the area. Now we're going to see if Nocton can be able to pull anything off. Nocton is level 6, uh, almost level 6. Going to notice that his blue buff is gone, so that's going to send him back shopping. He can upgrade that cloth armor finally to maybe the Riggles Lantern or um, at least the first part. And we got some huge Infinite damage going down. down on Wukong top. And huge damage to Cyclone. The to get away. And it might be enough. It was enough to save him. Yeah, Cyclone ability from Wukong. Knocking up Warwick. And then Cyclone, I believe it gains speed the longer the duration. Uh, there we go. Gain speed over the duration, so allowing him to escape fairly safely. Bottom lane, though, look at this. Tristana having an early port back and picking up the BF sword. So with the BF sword, maybe even if she may be able to start winning this lane, actually putting some decent damage down onto uh, Corky if she can catch her. 10,300 gold to 10,000, and it's practically even. Even Stevens across the board. Looking at the uh, gold graphs. Not much here at this stage. We're hitting the 9-minute mark. So you'll probably start seeing the teams starting to maybe ward up and, and think about jumping onto the dragon. Usually between the 12 and 15 mark. 15 minute mark rather. Let's get that out properly. And the aggression again on the top lane. Look at that damage from Warwick. But now he's out of mana. So no more hungering strikes. And it's going to let uh, Wukong with his Vamp Scepter and his Doran Blade regenerate some of that health. Corky opting to go BF Sword and Doran's Blade as well. So, I'll be interested to see who's going to win this bottom lane. I'm interested to see who's going to have the better damage. Corky's just gone back and gone shopping. Picked up himself a uh, big f best friend sword and a Doran's. Puts him one item in front of the uh, Tristana. Compare the damage. Tristana sitting at 143 to the 142. So even with the Dorans, Tristana is still one point ahead, and I think that's probably down to runes. It'll most likely be uh, almost a full, a full AD rune page. But um, at the same time, Corky's damage is dealing 10% extra as true damage with his passive. Yeah, that is true as well. So that'll add up. So, um, Just to add a comment to what Mephis has said. Uh, I agree with the way that the lane is played out. Warwick probably should have started with Boots. Corky doing huge damage to, Sona, damage to Sona at the bottom. Sorry to interrupt there. No, no, no problem. I'd rather jump in if you think a kill's going to happen. That is the more important stuff to watch. But I think um, what Warwick was anticipating was a lot of aggression from Wukong. You know, if I were in Wukong's shoes and I were playing that lane, I would definitely have been trying to put some hurt down. I would definitely have been trying to uh, play super, super aggressive against Warwick. Don't give him a chance to auto-attack. Don't give him a chance to, um, to to heal up with his passive. And now we've got some pressure on the top lane going down. Along with the uh, Cyclone, that's going to be able to slow him down. Here comes the Meat Cleavers from Mando. Mando's activated his ultimate masochism. He's also taking the turret damage, which is the right thing to do. Great, great dive. And that's going to be uh, a dead uh, Wukong on the top lane. Not, not, not. Mando able. getting away on 20 life. First Blood Tower dive. Really well played by, finally, Moon and Korlik. That Wukong Mundo combo. But just, just, just getting away. Really, really close. If Wuk if um, Warwick had had mana for infinite duration, he would have actually been able to survive that. But sadly, having no mana in his mana pool, not being able to jump on one of those champions. And look at the Sona playing super, super aggressive. Taking a phosphorus bomb and an auto attack to the face, and it really hurt. Corky maxing out phosphorus bomb first. One point into all the remainder of his spells. What was that northern? A little bit um, different to see a Corky maxing out the Phosphorus Bomb first. I would normally go with the um, Gatling Gun, personally. Well, it it, uh, it uh, depends how you want to play. Um, both both are pretty common. Um, and if you're going to be playing for sort of a harass game, you tend to take Gatling Cannon first. So, or, or you know, if, if you're winning your lane quite aggressively. Because then you can just keep the armor shred going and, and win those champion fights. We do have Warwick setting up Warwick in the middle here. In the middle. He might go for a flash uh, ulti. No, opting not to. Going to run into a Dr. Mundo. So they're going to see one another. So Kennen and Warwick both knowing that the champions are there. But uh, Corky's that tend to max out their cube. Corky's that tend to uh, max out their phosphorus bombs. And it's primarily for farming purposes. 
And it really does have great damage. I mean, look at the aggression here from Sona. The most chance isn't something to be laughed at either. I mean, if uh, a Wukong comes and jumps on him, or, or uh, sorry, a Warwick jumps on him, that's something that could save his life. Uh, and the same goes for Tristana. If they're standing in that cloud, um, there's a potential for them to miss and uh, you know not get the killing blow. Yep, that is true. Keep in mind as well, it's a 230 damage uh, ability as well. So, on a champion like Tristan, who's only got 1,100 life, that's a good chunk. I mean, of course, there has to be resistances worked in there. So, I mean, you're talking 175 damage after resistances, but that's really, really big, de decent chunk of damage combined with his uh, missile barrage. Um, he's going to be able to keep throwing out those abilities and throwing the damage down. Warwick now has been given blue buff, so he's going to be able to hungering strike all day long. Mundo setting up for another gank, but there is a ward here, so Wukong does, will be able to, or uh, Warwick will be able to see it. Cyclone coming out, and that's a bit of a premature. It does eventually pick up the Warwick, but Warwick is going to have to throw his infinity race. He catches Mundo, Mundo does have his ultimate ticking though, or it's going to be activated shortly. Nocturne now ticking. dives in right at the back there. If the fear proc gets off, this might be a dead Mundo. Huge damage being exchanged back and forth, back and forth, eventually Flash being burned. And no big damage items means that there's no uh, kill from either team. Kenan opting Kenan to go for a kill now. And that's huge. Picks up the stun. Ignite on Dr. Mundo. And that was well played by Mr. Perfect Double Z. Really, really, really good uh, slicing Maelstrom there under the turret. And picking up uh, a stun onto Mundo right at the outer edge. I don't know if you noticed it. It was just, just, just on the border of that... Um, that giving slicing Wukong, Maelstrom uh, ultimate. Giving uh, Warwick a double buff against the Wukong, that's just going to put him further behind. Who actually picked up the killing blow? It was Warwick that picked up the uh, killing blow as well. Warwick picked up the killing blow. Yeah. So, really nicely done there. Having a look at the farm though, Cassiopeia is out farming uh, Ken in the mid lane by 17 CS. 127 to 110. Corky Tristana, as bang on even as you can get. There is a 10 CS difference, so that's 200 gold, but... And slightly more creeps on Tristana's side of the wave, so she'll be able to balance that out. In the jungle, look at this though, which is very interesting. Nocturne 67 CS, he's uh, opted, to, he's got his Regal Lantern, and he's got his boots. And, and Mundo, going for the mid-game, late-game build, he's picked up a um, Heart of Gold. He's got Ninja Tab I completed as well. And what's very interesting for uh, this is the Regrowth Pendant. It might turn into a... Uh, uh, Oh, what's Random the hit point zone. thing? No, 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 the hit point one. Oh. The war item mogs. that gives... Yes, a war mogs. Or it could be working towards a Philosopher's Stone. You know, going for another gulp of five. And I didn't even notice it. That's the first dragon of the game. Going over to A25 to life. So that's a 15-minute dragon. A little bit more normal, a little bit more standard to what we're used to seeing at this level play. So that'll be back up at uh, around 21 minutes. And increasing their gold lead to 2,000 gold. To the 100 viewers that are hanging around, thank you for staying around. Thank you for saying hi. My name is Quickshot. Cassiopeia's got almost a full level on um, the cannon in the middle here as well. Well, that level think, 4 uh, blue buff, level 4 blue buff would have done a lot to give uh, Cassiopeia the lane advantage. You know, being able to spam out those uh, spells, being able to spam out consistently dealing poison damage over and over and over. It's really going to give them a lot of time. Um, Deathmaker, is, does it look like it's FPS lag or does it look like it's uh, latency lag? I think it is FPS. It feels like it's FPS because there is some lag on my side as well. Some damage going down. What I'll do is I'll reboot the stream after this match. And uh, I don't think it's latency because it's, yeah, it's definitely frames. So what I will be doing, guys, as soon as this match is over, I will give us a quick reboot on the stream and a reboot on the, uh, the streaming PC. Let's clear that RAM. Maybe that'll help a little bit. I'll drop some of the graphic settings as well. Warwick looks like he's going for a Glacial Shroud first item, so... Um, still building very... That's building quite defensive for up against the Wukong. I mean, he's got the... Um, Riggle's Lantern, which has armor, damage, and lifesteal. Then he, the Ninja Tabai uh, for the mischance. And um, it looks like he's going towards a Glacial Shroud with the uh, Chain Vest and the Mana Crystal. Face check here from Sona. Corky's going to dive in. Here comes Dr. Mundo. They're going to go for a tower dive. Or well, they were thinking about it. Uh, Sona may be a little bit slow on that uh, crescendo. Maybe would have been able to pick up an ultimate here. Hugely aggressive rocket jump from Tristana. It's going to be enough to deal chunks of damage. Sona's ultimate locking up all three champions in the bush. But Tristana not chasing. Tristana opting to pick up the farm in that bottom lane. Instead of maybe moving for the champions. 
Not certain I agree with that. I think they had a good, um, good aggression. A red buff knocked in would have kept somebody slow, would have kept somebody in range. Nevertheless, picking up that farm, picking up that CS. And you look at the items in the creep score there at the minute. And we can see, what ha see what's happening in this lane. Warwick again, thinking about coming to this mid lane. You can see that um, the, the uh, Team Destiny Gaming are a bit nervous about this middle lane. There's some obvious calls. Look, Cassie up here. I can't really handle her. I can't really do much because Warwick has come down twice in the last six or seven minutes. He's been thinking about ganking. He's been thinking about putting pressure down. And uh, has opted to run back and, and nothing's come of it thus far. Corky finished his Infinity Edge, but with the kill that Tristana has, she's finished her Infinity Edge and her Berserker's Greaves. So she's got that extra attack speed. Combine that with her um, Rapid Fire Q. It's going to be giving an additional 60%. <clears throat> and I think 1v1, Tristan is going to be able to um, win versus a Corky. But it's of course. an interesting choice from the Warwick there, uh, going for the, his team's blue buff as opposed to defending his tower. I think Technolink is really more worried about the champions at this point in time. He sort of won his lane relatively. I mean, I, I say won his lane, he's 40 CS behind. So, yes, he was beating Wukong. But he didn't turn it into a, um, a gold advantage. He didn't turn it into a creep advantage. And, you know, sort of mucking around in that middle lane, trying to put pressure and trying to put ganks. It's cost him 35, 40 CS. That's 800 gold. I mean, that's a big, big, big. It's halfway to a BF sword, two-thirds of a phage. I mean, that's a really noticeable difference. So we're going to have to see how this converts in the end. Um, gold difference is now growing to 3,000 gold. So... You know, the team fight stages, yes, maybe the individual champions for um, for Destiny are slightly ahead in, in some lanes. It's going to come down to these team fights. It's going to come down to a, whether or not the slicing match. Sona coming in on Ken and, oh no, sorry, Sona um, with an early Oracle. Looks like she's moving through the jungle clearing wards. or trying to clear wards for her team. Um, Look at the top lane now. Look at this, even with the 30 CS difference and being behind on a level, just the simple blue buff is enough for uh, Warwick to actually potentially win this lane. I mean, if he focuses his attention onto that Wukong, he would have been able to do a lot more. So He does have, I mean, if you look at it, he's got 180 armor already, um, which is a fair amount. Having a look at the items at the minute as well, what is going to work out quite nicely for Warwick is Warwick tech, popping a blue pull, will he get away in time? As soon as he... Remember, oh, those are teammates. Team. Yep, those are <laughs> teammates, brother dearest. Uh, getting overexcited. Yeah, we're. It's been a very passive game. We're 20 minutes in, and this is a three-kill game. Um, both teams again playing super, super defensively, but slightly better mechanical mechanical skills than our, our previous match. They're farming a little bit more. Look at Doctor Mundo. He's going to be working towards this War Mogs. Of course, increases. Looks like they're getting ready for another dragon. Things are going down. Well, dragon them. should be up at about twenty-one thirty. That, that's around about the time I think we took it last time, uh, or, or the timer we took it. And look at this now aggression from Cassia PF. She hangs around. This might be a. There's a paranoia landing onto Cassia PF. Slicing Maelstrom goes down, but Cassia PF flashes right out of it. Cassia PF getting three with her ulti Massive, as well. massive damage in return. Pick, managing to pick up a double kill. Compliments of a great petrifying gaze. Tristana and Warwick are now overextended. And his kill score is now 4 to 2. Wukong's thinking about using his Nimbus Strike, trying to get up into range. And that was brilliant, brilliant play by Triple X Kevin. He uh, flashed out of range of the, um, the Slicing mm. Maelstrom. And please remember this, guys. To the 110 people sitting in the trade or, or sitting in the, the, the chat, don't face check a Cassie up here. That's always going to happen. Cassie's just going to turn around, and if you're looking her in the eyes, that silly Medusa wannabe is going to turn you to marble. It's not worth it, and you will die. As you notice right now, Cassie up here catching all three champions moving up. She waited, or he waited, sorry Kev. Kevin delayed the uh, petrifying gaze until they were within range. As soon as they were within range, she yelled out that scream and won the team fight for them. So well played, Triple X Kevin. Um, with that dragon and the also, sorry, with the dragon and the assists, have a look there. Mundo's now completed his war mogs. And what were you trying to say before I rudely interrupted you twice there, Norsi? I was just going to say, um, 
Mr. Perfect seemed to pop his ulti a little bit early there, a little bit eager to get the kill. Um, especially at sort of the stage of the game where the ganks are really starting. You don't really want to be throwing your triple to uh, slicing Maelstrom as a cannon on one person. Yeah, and, I agree um, with that. Because, you know, if he could have counter stunned after the Cassio Pierce done there, it probably would have been a different engage. That's true. Also the duration on it. You notice that the Slicing Maelstrom was ran through about half of its uh, duration before the Mundo and Wukong had even entered the fight. So um, I do agree. I think they need to be a little bit more hesitant. You know, they are behind in gold. We're two dragons behind now as well. So the next dragon is going to be up around about the 28 minute mark. Kill score of 2 to 4, but the big, big, big difference. 27,000 gold to 33,000 gold. 6k difference. Spread amongst five players, it's not as bad. I mean, having a look here at the minute. This just... could go badly for Wukong at top. Huge damage going down. It's going to depend on this fear proc. Manda's fear... coming in. Manda's going to be chasing off this Nocturne. Going to be running in with that Burning Agony. Opting not to go for the kill because Wukong did use Cyclone to escape. So his main damage burst from there. And of course being on low life, wasn't willing to uh, jump in with that Nimbus Strike uh, crushing blow. 2 for the kill score, 6,000 gold the difference, A25 to life, currently in control of the game. We have lost two towers, and now we're starting to hit this mid-game phase, we're starting to hit the team fight phase, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, make that scream more, uh, what scream are we talking about there, Sphinx? I even forgot how to say your name. I think it's your... Uh... A25 for life annunciation. <laughs> well, we'll have a little bit more fun with that just as soon as we got there. I, I wouldn't say Kenan is letting his team down. Look, 196 CS to 215. He had to deal with a level 4 blue buff Cassie up here. And I I, I play a lot of Kenan. And I, I don't think Kenan can win a lane against uh, Cassie up here without some assistance. There weren't too many ganks in this middle lane from Nocturne. He did tend to pay a bit more attention to the top lane. And I think what's going to need to happen is just a little bit more patience and a little bit more control from uh, Team Destiny Gaming. If they play a little bit more cautiously and they use their abilities at the right time, they really can win these team fights because they should be able to blow up the likes of uh, Soraka and Cassiopeia once they get through the, uh, um, the heals, of course. And then Warwick Nocturne building a bit of tanky DPS. It's going to come Warwick down to... going very, very tanky at the start, though. There's only DPS item being the Riggle's Lantern. Keep in mind, though, he is getting a benefit from the uh, Will of the Ancients compliments of Kennen. And, of course, he's got pretty good base values on the Hungering Strike. I mean, let's have a look at it. Hungering Strike at level 5. It's 275 base damage. You know, the champion health pools of the squishy characters. Oh, okay, Cassiopeia is not a good one to look at. 1,400 in Soraka. 2,400 on the uh, Rhyalize Crystal Scepter wearing Cassiopeia. And look at that damage. Poison plus a cleaver to the face is 20% of Kennen's HP. And a big one from Corky. Throwing out that rocket, hitting three enemy champions. And here's the poke comp that we're going to be looking at. Cassiopeia poison, Corky rockets, and the meat cleavers from Dr. Mundo. It's really going to be hitting. So we finally hit this team fight stage. You can see a lot of caution, a lot of trepidation from both teams. And I think maybe Baron may decide this. You know, the first team to commit to a Baron and either taking it or losing it because of an overcommitment may end up uh, winning or losing their team the game. So let's have a look what's happening here from Team Destiny Gaming. I'm really nervous. You can see it in their playstyle. They're, they're, they're staying together, they're grouping together. They're not wanting to move alone. And it's just allowing uh, A25 to pick up all the farm that they need. 263 CS on Corky to the 233 on Tristana. That's the difference. And that's going to be about enough to balance that kill. Corky's, although Corky does have three assists, so he's going to be a bit ahead. Infinity Edge might have enough for his Phantom Dancer soon enough. He might even go... I was just gonna say, do you think he might go into a phage? I was, a, I was um, gonna say, yeah, with with the, the ruby crystal on the right hand side and the fact that he's got two thousand gold and not recalling, I think that's gonna be a trinity force. I think that's probably gonna be it. Um, and he's got two thousand on gold, so he might even just save up for a for a max uh, trinity force. 
We may be preparing here for a fight, and as I mentioned earlier, Dragon is coming up around about the 28 minute mark. And she's going to be in the next sort of minute or so. So let's keep an eye on uh, this Dragon area. And there it is, 27.55. Not bad. At least I'm paying attention to my timing. But we've got a split here from Team Destiny, not just coming up solo from, from below. He's going to be using Paranoia shortly. Wukong is going to be popping his Cyclone, so there's the Cyclone. Look at that huge damage onto Soraka. Soraka moves away, blows her wish and her summon a heal. Along with the Astral Blessing, is able to give herself all the life back. And a Cassiopeia ultimate and with all the poison, along with Corky's huge, huge damage from Phosphorus Bombs, Missile Barrage, and all of those auto attacks, it just melts the team at Destiny Gaming. The only champion to truly get hurt there was Soraka. They tried to blow her up. And it just it simply like didn't work. Baron. And this uh, is the right thing to do. Time. This is the right thing to do. Um, it's going to allow A25 to just keep pushing. They've extended their goal to 10,000 at this point anyway. It's a huge, huge, huge gold lead. And uh, it looks as though A25 are setting themselves up for a round two victory. So that's, that's uh, Baron Asher down. I think we'll see uh, A25 go back shopping now. I mean, if we look at the gold totals, Corky and uh, Cassiopeia both had over 3,000 in the bank there. Yeah, that is true. And some messages there on uh, in the chat talking about the AoE damage, and it's so true. Wukong jumped in there with his ultimate, knocked everybody up. Cassiopeia turned her petrifying gaze on, and I think she managed to catch three or four champions. I didn't actually notice uh, just how many actually did get stunned up. But it was a huge amount of damage coming down from a poison. I'm gonna learn the ability. And also next. exceptional focus from A25, going straight for that cannon just to prevent the the slicing maelstrom from um, doing to them what um, they just did to. Yeah, exactly. PG. Preventing those AOE stuns, preventing that damage. And I think Corky now. Let's have a look. What has he finished? He's got his phage up. He's opted to finish a quicksilver sash as well. And that's a really smart move. That's gonna negate the. Um, Infinite Duration from Warwick, it's going to negate any stuns from Kennen or even the fear from Nocturne. So a really, really good choice in Quicksilver Sash. 12,000 gold lead at 30 minutes. And I think it's just a matter of time now, really. That's a huge, huge, huge advantage. You're talking 3,000 odd gold, a little bit below 3,000 gold for each champion. It was about 2,500, really, 2,200, but nevertheless, math isn't my strong point. I'm not here as a math teacher. And I agree in there as well from Rockstar 2K11. Um, trying to focus Soraka. Yes, she's the healer, and if you can blow her up before she gets her uh, wish off, it's a worthwhile investment. But if she still gets her, uh, her wish off, you've just spent all your ultimates and all your burst damage on somebody... That's just healed up 400 to you know 500 hit points of health along with her Astral Blessing. So the main thing for me was just how little damage and bit applied to the rest of the team. That was the big one. That was the big deciding factor. So 2-9 the score. Baron buff about halfway gone. A little bit more than halfway gone. And with this creep wave, they're going to stop pushing down this tower. Ultimates are all back up for Team Destiny Gaming. So we're going to have to see what they can do. Damage going down. Corky's just trying to poke down this tower and he's and taking it down. One creep wave has dropped the tower by half. So if they can keep this up, keep the poke, and keep the pressure on, that's, that's going to be an inhibitor turret down. And what would you do now in this situation? If you were in Destiny Gaming shoes, Norse? I think... They're in a really tough position. Uh, what they're doing now, just waiting out the Baron, is good. I think what they really need to do is to... Um, Shut down the, the Corky or the, the Cassiopeia. Um, Look how much damage that uh, Kennen has taken. Sona comes in with her ultimate. The Crescendo stunning three or four champions. Huge petrifying gaze just completely melts Destiny Gaming apart. Wukong has been tanking the turret for 10 million years, but still doesn't go down thanks to some fantastic, fantastic positional play. Soraka, the only champion to go down for A25 thus far. And that was compliments of turret damage, guys. Yeah, they jumped onto her and they landed a few attacks, but. Turret did all the work, Turret did all the pressure, and I cannot get over the damage from the Petrifying Gaze of Cassiopeia. She threw down that Noxious Blast, she threw down Petrifying Gaze, and look at that! Nimbus Strike into a Crushing Blow plus an Auto Attack from each of the champions instantly kills Tristana. That's the Nexus kill down as well, 33 minute victory, and uh, A25 for life, pulling out the big guns! 
And uh, it looks like we've got our round three game up and running as well. Uh, I'm just going to tell the players exactly who to invite. And we'll be able to jump into round three in just a few minutes. Let's pull up the uh, game screen here. There is the final scores. Final uh, points going down. Really well played to A25. A little bit unlucky for Team Destiny Gaming. And just really struggling to get a good team fight. That was the, that was the only real thing. Individually, the, the, the champions had their moments. You know, some of them did really, really well. Some of them did a little bit uh, not so great. But it was just the team fight coordination. A little bit of lack of commitment. I think um, DG's Warwick could have built a little bit more um, aggressively. Maybe just keeping the Glacial Shroud for a little bit, not finishing his uh, Frozen Heart and going into something a little bit more DPS orientated. Could have possibly helped his team a little bit more by doing a tad more damage and um, you know pushing his advantage, because he definitely did have an early game advantage that he let slide away um, to that Wukong on top lane. Yeah, that is true. All right, Norse, do you have an invite to the next game? 